Welcome everybody to the Black Belt Mindset Transformation Show. I'm your host, Jason Reed, and on this channel, we do tips and strategies on mindset training. We also do interviews with people who've been successful in black belts. Today, we're doing a guest interview with Mr. Gavin Vital. So let's invite Gavin on the show. How are you doing today, Gavin? Good. Good. I appreciate you taking time here today. Tonight is a Wednesday, Valentine's Day, and tonight we'll be having class in about an hour. Excited for it? Yep. Love it. Now, Gavin, I'm going to just tell a little bit about you just so people kind of know. You are a third degree level two black belt. Is that right? Yes. Um, and I'm going to ask some questions about it. But before this, what got you started in martial arts? Tell me your earliest memories. What level you started at? Tell the family at home. What got me started in martial arts was my dad brought me and my brother in. And he was like, do you want to do this? And I was like, yeah, it looked, it looked fun. And then seven years later, I'm right here at third degree level two black belt. So the very first night you knew you wanted to do it? Yep. Was it just because it was fun or expecting something? Or tell me what you were, do you remember the first night? No, not really, but I remember <laughs> what he said. He did. How old were you? Do you remember? I think I was about four. Four years old. Uh, tell everybody your older brother uh, also got started as well, too, and his name is? Cameron Fatal. Cameron Fatal as well, too, and he is a fourth degree level one. one black belt as well, too. Love it. That's awesome. Do you remember anything from your martial arts training uh, in our Tiger Cups class? Um, when I was a Tiger Cup, I remember there used to be pictures in the front, and I used to be a goofball and just look at them. <laughs> look at the pictures of funny stuff in the room. I love it. Well, Gavin, I'm going to go through go about 18 to 20 questions here. We're going to tell people about some of your history and career, okay? Okay. Uh, just to let you know, he's been to different world events. So this is every July. We have a major event where all the best martial artists get together and the best of the best go against each other. And two or three years ago, Gavin took first place in which ring was it first degree what black belt level was it i think i was a brown belt oh you're a brown belt at that so a brown belt level so all the brown belts of your age all went against each other and you took first place in sparring pretty crazy huh yep. do you remember much of that match i remember it was the final round between me and this one dude and um he got uh the last kickoff which it was two, three, and I saw the clock. It had five seconds left, and I got a kick to the head, which made the match four, two. It made it five, two, um, three. Gotcha. So he was ahead, then you kicked to the head, and now you won the point on that one, huh? Mm -hmm. Love that. It's pretty exciting, wasn't it? Yeah. How did you feel after you got that gold medal? I felt really nice and proud of myself. That is awesome. Feel great on your confidence. That's a great story. Have you won every single sparring match you've ever done? Nope. No, nobody has, right? It's part of the deal. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, right? Yep. Um, if you would tell people, uh, I already talked about what got you started in martial arts. Um, how do you balance training with tra uh, with school? So, for example, how many days a week do you typically go to class? I go six days a week. So ultra over committed six days a week. They're in the academy. So tell me what your typical day. Obviously, you go to school, and then what do you usually do after school? After school, I usually do my homework. Unless I don't have any, then I just read. And then depending on what time my class is, if it's at 4.30, I just get ready right away, and then I go to class. If it's around 5.30, I usually take a break and play basketball and then go and get ready. And if it's 6.20, I get ready an hour and a half um, later after playing football and get ready and just go to class. So you're able to get your homework in. You're able to get play time in with a little bit of basketball and hang out with your friends as well, too. Yep. That's awesome. Uh, so you're able to balance it. That's just a hard thing to do. Uh, tell me your favorite part of being a third degree level two black belt. Um, let's just tell everybody, how many more testings do you have here locally before you have to go test the big testing? I think I have about one more test. Yeah. So this coming June will be your last testing possibly here in Lincoln, Nebraska. After that, you're possibly going to test at the world event in about a year. Pretty yeah. crazy, huh? So what's your favorite part about being a third degree level two? My favorite part being a uh, third degree level two is I get to hang out with a ton of friends and do practice testings in class and just have fun. And train with some of the harder kids as well, too. I love it. Um, how do you prepare mentally for a sparring match in a competition? I look at all the other people sparring and see what techniques they throw and see mm -hmm. if they have any rhythm and if they keep on throwing combinations. And then when it's my turn against them, I use my advantage to me knowing that and I counterattack them. So you work, take away their weaknesses. Do you know who Bill Belichick is? Nope. <laughs> New England Patriots coach who always said, I'm taking away the offense's best weapon. 
and you do that. I love that. That's a great strategy. As opposed to just think about what you're doing, you're looking at your competition, see what they like to do. Very smart. I love that. Uh, let's see how we talked about preparing mentally. Uh, who are some of your biggest influences in martial arts? So my biggest influence in my march in my martial arts are my instructors, Master Reed, Mister Reed, Master Searles, and Mrs. Romeg. Also my parents and my friends and my brother. Love that answer. That's awesome. Uh, talked about your influence. What is the biggest challenge you faced? My biggest challenge I faced. Probably when I'm doing a forms match, I'm trying to balance out my power and my chambering and alignment and stances at the same time. Because if I do too much power, then they probably won't vote for me. So I have to balance it out. So you have to balance technique, precision, balance, coordination, along with power. And that's a tough thing to do. I yeah. totally understand that. It's a challenge for a lot of people. Uh, how do you celebrate your victories? I celebrate my victories by after testing or tournament i go and get ready at home and then we go out to eat ah foods are your uh, celebration where do you guys like to go eat at either big red or texas roadhouse love it what's your favorite if you have a celebration meal what would that be favorite food burger burger i love that answer uh last little question then we're going to the speed round after that uh what advice would you give to other kids who want to do the same things you've done in martial arts a lot of kids will say they want to make it to class it's hard when they get there, isn't it? So what would you tell them? Is um, if you're scared, try and like make new friends and they'll calm you down or tell the instructor and they'll help you out. So get other people to help you out. Love that answer. All right, Gavin, we are going into the speed sparring round here. So basically these are going to be short questions and short answers, you know, about maybe one, two, three words. So yep. are you ready? Yes. All right, let's do it. Uh, what is your go-to move in a sparring match? Slide, side, kick, reverse punch. Slide, side, kick, reverse punch. I like that. Can you tell me a time when you had to overcome a setback or an injury? Um, There's a one time I sprained my wrist and it was all bruised up. And there's a tournament in about a week. And what did you have to do? I'd have to, um, don't, I had to not care about the um my arm and just go through it. Love it. What's your top martial arts goal in the near future? Hmm. You just passed testing, so the next thing coming up is probably a tournament, huh? Yep. So what do you want to do there? You want to get a... Gold medal. In everything. Yes. I love it. I love it. Uh, tell me about goals outside of Taekwondo. Outside of Taekwondo, I want to get better in football. Love it. Mostly in, in um, when I run to the end zone. Well, if somebody tries and pushes me or um, tackles me, I you still be able to catch a ball if they pass to me. Love it. Ever come to contact. Uh, how has martial arts impacted areas outside of Taekwondo? So how has the skills you learn in martial arts helped out other areas? Um, it helped out other areas when, um, it, there's, um, there's one dude, he was trying to beat up one of my friends and I just helped him out. Ah, I like that. Helping other people out as well too. Looks like two more questions. Uh, most important lesson martial arts taught you. What do you think? Mm, to be disciplined and not brag. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, two more questions. If you could have this, uh, who would you love to spar if you had the chance? Justin Robinson. Justin Robinson, who is a 15-year-old fourth-degree black belt. Why Justin? Because I saw him spar against Cameron, which was really rough, and I want to spar against him so he can beat me up. I love you. want to get beat up? You want to go people better than you, huh? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, finally, what's your message to the fans and supporters of people like you? Um. I'd probably say is if you if you um say you don't if you say one of your goals you want to try and do it but you're not able to do it because of something don't let that reason back you down and keep pushing and hustling because not sometimes you're not gonna always get what you want you just gotta keep grinding pushing hard you go seven six days a week do you always feel like it all the time nope. Nope, you still go too. That's what makes you mad. Love it, Gavin. Thank you so much for doing the interview. Uh, at those of you at home, tell me what are some things you learned about from Gavin. What are some of the skills that you can learn from not just kicking and punching and great at martial arts, but those other skills like overcoming challenges, helping other people. What is the biggest thing you can get from this? If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this channel, hit the notifications icon, like this video, and share with anybody else to do the same thing too. So thanks again, Gavin. High five, my man. We'll look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.